great. We just put down what he says and we turn on our papers and that's all we have to do. I can write about this topic that's more liberal and it'll be a lot easier. I'm a lot less likely to be challenged. You were kind of just going to have to regurgitate what he had said and what he believed in order to get the good grade. Education becomes a spectator sport. I often give them a statement in quotation marks and ask them to agree or disagree. I've noticed that most of them, whatever I put in quotes, most of them will agree with. This is, right, and there's something wrong here. What most faculty want is for students to validate their pathetic life experiences. <laughs> if we were secure, we would have different jobs. But we're faculty, and so we want people to agree with us, to nod, to write stuff down as if it were important. And that's what passes as education. And classrooms aren't the only places you'll find university employees pushing politics. Schools often pay people to operate administrative offices that are blatantly political in nature. Take, for instance, the Office of Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Awareness at Bucknell University. This office held events and sent campus-wide emails telling students to support gay marriage. Now, whether or not you support gay marriage is beside the point. The question is, should paid university employees be actively encouraging students to adopt their politics? Bucknell also pays the staff of the Women's Resource Center, which now sponsors bus trips to political rallies like this one in Washington, D.C. But when female students approach the Women's Center to arrange a trip to a rally with a different political perspective, they were turned down. Many schools have similar offices, and their self-proclaimed purpose is to support equality between the sexes. Let's see how they're doing. Excuse me. Yeah. I was wondering if you could help me. I'm a little lost. Uh -huh. Do you know the campus very well? Yeah. We're not from around here, actually, and we're not even sure if we're in the right building. Do you know the area pretty well? Okay. I'm from New York City. I don't know this campus at all. Did you do Matthew and study? We're looking for the, the men's resource center. Is the men's center also in here, or is that somewhere else? We just saw a sign for the Women's Center from the road, so we figured maybe it's like the women's room and the men's room. You know, like the bathrooms are right next door to each other. I'm looking for the men's studies department. Men's studies? Men's center? It's not here? No. Do you know where it is? Yeah, we can't find it. Is it, is it nearby? There is no men's center. Uh, we don't have a men's resource center. There is no such thing as men's studies. There is a men's locker room. <laughs> men's locker room? The men's locker room. They probably wouldn't want me going in there with a camera. I'm looking for the Gender Equity Resource Center. Um, that's upstairs on the second floor. Thanks a lot. We're just looking for uh, someone from the Gender Equity Center. I'd like I to am, the lodge a complaint. Well, there seems to be... There's a women's studies program, and I, I found out there's no men's studies program. You need to go to the Title IX compliance office. Oh, okay. That, that, that Do you all think that's something IX. that they would... They have to. That's, that's the law, Title IX. You have to really? That, that. So how come nobody has done anything about that in the past? Why well, wouldn't... No, I don't do Title IX work. Yeah, I mean, it just seems odd that there would be a women's studies and no men's studies program, right? You have to speak to the Town Nine Compliance Officer, but that's an academic compliance. Issue. Oh, okay. So that gender equity has got nothing to do with that? We're gender equity resource, so I'm the resource telling you where to go. <laughs> oh, that's Town cool. Town Nine Compliance in 200 California Hall. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a Be good well. day, sir. Take care. Title Nine. I'd heard that before. It's the law that prevents gender discrimination in higher education. Bucknell University shut down the men's wrestling team because of Title Nine. Too much money was being spent on men's sports. But Title IX extends beyond sports. So even though people laughed at the idea of a men's center, not having one may actually be illegal. Today, only 44% of college students are men. 
So now that men are in the minority, shouldn't they get a resource center too? Well, we tried, unsuccessfully, to file a complaint. And even though our questions didn't get us anywhere, at least we learn the real purpose of these programs. The Women's Center like promotes feminism. We try to protect women and we try to get them involved in politics, get them involved in politics. Get them involved in politics? Oh, good for her to admit it. Finding professors who admit to having a political agenda is much more rare. But in the wake of September 11th, many students have begun to figure it out on their own. Since September 11th, students have begun to question the faculty. They've been trying to explain to the students America brought it on herself, that it's America's fault. We kind of brought it upon ourselves, basically. There was never one professor who said September 11th was not a justified action. I don't know. Mm -mm. Rarely ever does a uh, professor say positive things about what America's done. America is the root of evil in the world. America is a racist, sexist, homophobic, bigoted country. Has a lot of currency here. There certainly aren't any, uh, you know, why America is good courses around. Uh, there's a lot of why America is bad. Anytime, anywhere the United States uses force, it is inappropriate. This is a theme that seems to come up a lot in classes that have nothing to do with whether or not the, America, uh, the United States uses, uh, uses force. The intent now seems to be to uh, train students that uh, everything the United States and Israel does in the Middle East is, is wrong. There is a pervasive anti-Americanism which holds America responsible for all or most of the ills in the world. You're going to get a lot more support and a lot less flack if you argue that U.S. military or foreign policy actions are wrong. Capitalism is bad. Western civilization is marked primarily by evil and depredation. Have you ever heard of a professor saying anything positive about the United States? Hmm. I'm, th I'm thinking. Well, this student had something positive to say about the United States, but his professor did not approve. I'm a Kuwaiti citizen. I came here six months ago. In August 2nd, 1990, Iraq invaded Kuwait. It overtook the entire country within a day. Constantly, there was darkness. We couldn't see sunlight because Iraqi soldiers were burning Kuwaiti oil wells. My two uncles were kidnapped and taken to a southern Iraqi prison. They still can't discuss the atrocities and the terrible things that happened to them. And all these terrible things stopped from happening because of the United States of America. After I wrote a pro-American essay upholding the U.S. Constitution, he called me to his office. He told me to explain myself. And he said, because I'm a Kuwaiti citizen, therefore I am biased, that the Founding Fathers were elitists, and that the U.S. Constitution was written for the benefit of the Founding Fathers only. He threatened me into seeking regular psychological help. I'll go to the Dean of International Admissions who has the power to take away my visa. He threatened my entire future in this country. Because I love this country, I may get thrown out of this country. Two days later, Foothill College approved the first of two anonymous flyers that attacked Ahmad personally. There is a flyer distributed all over Foothill College comparing me to Adolf Hitler and a suicide bomber. There's a stamp on it. The Foothill College Student Activities Office, Foothill College, approved that message. Well, that just doesn't seem right. If Steve Hinkle was almost arrested for posting his flyer, how could this one get an official stamp of approval? I was wondering if we might be able to speak with someone about how flyers get approved for posting on campus. Yeah. Building, I guess. That's student affairs. Um, I've been wanting to do this guy. 6201. 6201. That, that okay. Brick building. Thanks and a the lot. First door to the left. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm looking for someone named Bill. Hi, Bill. My name's Evan Maloney. Hi. I was wondering if you had a moment to chat about how flyers get posted on campus, how they get approved, and whether you have any record of who submits them. I'll talk to you, but you have to turn that off. Do you think that anyone... Say no until that goes off. Do you think that anyone would be willing to speak on camera? 